the 133rd annual commencement exercises at Wagner College will open with America the Beautiful. Please join the vocal ensemble of graduating seniors coming to the platform and here on the platform as they lead us in the singing of America the Beautiful. Please remain standing until after the invocation by Reverend Martin Malzahn. The great Persian mystic Hafiz said, I should not make any promises right now, but I know that if you pray, somewhere in this world, something good will happen. Wagner College class of 2018, something good is happening. Let us continue to pray. We come as joyful people to a day of celebration. Let us see the goodness that surrounds us. Help us to see our neighbors. Strengthen us to guard the image of one another for it is in friend, stranger, and even in foe that we see the image of you, our creator. Let us be brave, let us be bold, let us be kind, let us be just, and may we always remember that we are beloved. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the 133rd Commencement Exercises of Wagner College. Let me just take a second to explain the protocol of what happens for the next hour and a half. Take, we'll be together probably for the last time, all together at one time on this beautiful oval. And the way we organize graduation is that we have some wonderful speakers for you to celebrate this moment, people who will emulate the values that you've shown and we all believe in at Wagner College. We have obviously folks marching across the stage. We start with our graduate students and end with our undergraduates. We also have some student speakers as well. We get induct you with a very short ceremony into the Alumni Association and then we end with the choir, our, our singers coming back to sing the alma mater. And then for those who want to stay around, we have a wonderful reception in the main dining hall with some elegant desserts. So enjoy this moment. So let's start the program officially. Thank you, Dean Tooker, for leading us as the faculty marshal. Thank you, Dr. Calver, for the role you're going to play today in our commencement exercises. Today you were led in by five Golden Seahawks, Dr. Warren Prochi, John Burstler, Professor Harold Kozak, Marilyn Nicol Genovese, Dorothy Nelson Gilly, class of 1968, who they took the same steps on this very same oval 50 years ago. Congratulations. After four challenging years, and for some of you as graduate students and second degree students, shorter periods of time, 
On behalf of the entire college community, we extend our congratulations and our admiration for all of your achievements, your leadership, and your service on the campus and to New York City and to the nation. I welcome all of your parents, families, and friends, distinguished guests, and members of our community. We have with us some very special supporters. Some have endowed scholarships and made gifts in support of your work at the college, and others have given tirelessly to the efforts to extend the opportunities available to our students and to our faculty. And I'd like to recognize them today as we begin the ceremony. So from our Board of Trustees, our Chairman, Dr. Warren Prochi, Class of 1968, Mary Caracappa, Class of 1982, and parent of Anthony Hurtado from the Class of 17, Andrew Catizzi, 1972, Dr. Aletta Diamond, Class of 1965, honorary of 2015, Alex Fox, son of former board member Donald Fox, Ralph Green, Jr., parent of Ralph Green III, who received his undergraduate degree in 15 and his MBA in 17, Dr. Tom Kendris, Mark Lebovitz, class of 91, Richard Morgan, parent of Richard Morgan from class of 2012, Joan Nicholas, daughter of Mike and Margaret Nicholas from the class of 1949, Lorraine McNeil Popper from the class of 78, Dr. Maureen Robinson, class of 67 and honorary doctorate in 2003, and Kim Spiro, daughter of Donald and Evelyn Spiro from the class of 1949, for whom we have two major buildings and the School of Nursing name. Thank them all for their service and commitment. Congratulations on your special day. This is a wonderful moment of recognition for your academic, athletic, civic, and campus achievements. You have demonstrated your commitment to learning by doing, your openness to new ideas and diverse cultures, and your intellectual and leadership competencies. You are graduating from a fine college. You are prepared for the next steps in building your personal as well as your professional lives. So much is right for you on this day as you celebrate your graduation with your friends and your family. You are cherished by our faculty and by our staff and administration, and I personally treasure what you have accomplished at Wagner, and I hope you will always count Wagner and, the be and this beautiful campus as one of your homes throughout your lives. Every generation has its special advantages and its unique challenges. You are living during a time of remarkable technological change where virtually everything ever written, recorded, or performed sits on a smartphone in your pocket. The knowledge of all the previous generations is easily and readily available to you in seconds. It is also a time of unprecedented medical breakthroughs in the neuroscience of the brain, in the possibilities of extended quality of life through new medical innovations, in, in, in immunology, in genetics, in organ transplants, in early disease detection, in numerous forms of respiratory cancers, diabetes, HIV, AIDS, cardiology, tuberculosis, among many other medical discoveries that promise to extend the quality and length of life. And you're also lit alive during an age of unprecedented access to new knowledge, as well as a remarkable expansion in communication technology where the people of the world have direct access to each other in ways we could only have imagined a few decades ago. And I could go on and continue to this list of many other exciting advances in everyday life that make your generation one so clearly marked by dramatic emerging opportunities. But there are very dark clouds that are looming over all of this human progress. You are graduating an historical moment marked by the specter of deep social divisions that threaten the very foundations of these human advances. We are seeing a sustained attack on science and scientific thinking, which are some of the keys to all of these modern advancements. We are seeing assertions and accusations equated and substituted for sound evidence-based arguments. For too many, including elected public officials in many nations, ideology preempts facts. Unfounded conspiracy narratives are equated with well-documented studies, and magic thinking is substituted for well-thought-out and factually-based arguments. In too many quarters, 
reason itself becomes the enemy of sought-after political and material advantage. And these clouds of anti-intellectualism are part of a larger cloudscape where intolerance and bigotry and human cruelty are on the rise, often justified, justified around self-serving ideologies we are living at a time when the unspeakable brutality of terrorism, forced migration, and street violence threaten to become normalized. Unless we regain our individual and collective sense of empathy and respect for others, the hard-earned progress around human rights and the rule of law will slip from our control and they will be replaced by an unrelenting use of physical force in resolving individual, political, and social conflicts. You're living through a period of increased racial injustice and anti-Semitism, as well as attempts to subordinate women and expunge social diversity, which is not in the end to be feared, but understood as among our greatest assets. It is a time marked by a dark cloud of political paranoia that promises to overwhelm nonpartisan, well-negotiated compromises that are hammered out in the spirit of our traditional American optimism for pragmatic problem solving in the face of adversity. Your generational challenge is to restore that social confidence and to craft the civic imagination which, back, which brings back us towards the founding values of this republic, which while far from a reality at our national origins, remain as Dr. Martin Luther King put so eloquently 55 years ago, not just his dream, but our national aspiration where each of us is judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. The sources of that, thank you. <clears throat> the sources of that hope appears in the pledge that every child every day in America, in American schools, recites, namely an allegiance to a republic with justice and liberty for all. <laughs> to accomplish this realization of an inclusive, fair, and caring democracy, it will take an exceptional generation of young transformational leaders, just like those heroes beautifully portrayed in the Broadway musical celebrating Alexander Hamilton. We need a new generation that believes in the good community and is willing to enter into the public commons to alter the arc of history. And I personally believe, and I mean this so sincerely because I've known you so well, I personally believe you will become that generation. We've prepared you at Wagner College for this challenge. First, you've been engaged in an innovative model of liberal education, what we have called here since 1998, the Wagner Plan for the Practical Liberal Arts. It's not named liberal education for any, just any reason. It has nothing to do in and of itself with what we call liberal or conservative politics. Rather, it harkens back to the ancient Greek philosophy where the aim of being broadly and deeply educated about the world around you was to free you from merely being a prisoner of your own personal experience. Liberalus artes to the ancient Greeks, liberal arts to us, is an educational approach allowing students to see the world wide by acquiring the sharp skills of compelling written and spoken conversation and communication in critical and independent thinking and in problem solving. It liberated you by exposing you to different cultures and historical periods, unique as well as different and sometimes competing value systems. In short, liberal education lets you see beyond yourself and your own experiences to see the world wide and deep, to see the whole cosmos, if you will, to become cosmopolitan citizens of the world. At Wagner, we have joined this revered and classic form of learning with applied and professional learning in the areas of health practice, of nursing, physician assistant, in business administration, and in education. These applied disciplines teach us about learning by doing, where all those liberal art assets are joined to real world context and theory and practice to produce what we refer to as the practical liberal arts. This approach to learning 
and doing is the Wagner Plan, where we join the text of your learning communities and your majors with clinical and field-based and civic experiences. Your Wagner biographies are just chock full of extraordinary civic accomplishments in the local neighborhoods such as Port Richmond, Park Hill, Stapleton and St. George, as well as in Costa Rica and Haiti and Guatemala and Botswana and Ghana. All economically and politically marginalized neighborhoods and nations, you're mentoring and tutoring in their schools. You're preparing youngsters for college readiness. Your commitment to their nutrition and wellness and your work in food recovery and clinical assistance in hospitals and in villages and in many nonprofit organizations makes an enormous difference of the lives of many who are denied the basic resources of a good life. Your biographies are rich with examples of a full education where you have learned to marry the habits of your hearts with the power of your hands and your intellect. In short, you have what I've referred to as demonstrating the arts of democracy, namely the development of empathy for others, of building reciprocity with others, of forging cooperative teams in solving problems, of the skills of the new technologies and social media to become laser sharp in building coalitions across all those unique ethnic, racial, and personal identities that make up our diverse communities. And finally, you have learned to move into action in making sustainable change. I have so much faith in you personally and in your generation in advancing all those innovations and human progress that I enumerated earlier in this speech. You are the generation to engage all these challenges that threaten to degrade democratic culture and to defeat those that elicit the worst of all of our human instincts, namely, our drive to substitute violence for reason and justice. Instead, you're a new generation capable of healing our social divides, building a fair and just social order, and it's imperative that you rise to this historical moment. I'll leave you with this simple personal plea. I have a beautiful little four-month-old granddaughter, my first grandchild, who I think about all the time, and she's actually here today with her mother. Her name is Zoe, and little Zoe is a multi-ethnic, multi-racial child. Not only is she beautiful, but she appears to be quite smart. Her parents are loving, and they are thoughtful. And I think about how little Zoe will experience the world. Will she be the object of bigotry and cruelty, or will she grow up to be strong and flourish and learn, like you, to bring out the best in herself and the best in others? What gives me hope that her life will be one marked by meaning and honor is what I've learned here at Wagner, that your generation is a generation of transformational leadership to honor the pledge in creating a world for liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your day. Thank you. Today we will honor two highly accomplished persons, Dr. Freeman Arowski and Dr. Lee Kenethelkamp. The Robinson Family Professor of Religious Studies, Dr. Walter Kalber, will call them forward for citation and presentation of awards. Listen to what they have to say. They're remarkable people. I've known both of them for years. Lee was actually here at my inauguration in 2002, many years ago, and she's been active with our college. And Freeman has been an unbelievable, as Lee, transformative leader in their own right. And they have short but powerful things to say to you today. So, Dr. Kalber. Dr. Garassi, I present Lee Neffelkamp for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Trustees Lorraine McNeil Popper and Aletta Diamond will assist with placing the hood on the shoulders of Lee Neffelkamp. It would be no exaggeration to say that Dr. Lee Neffelkamp is America's educator par excellence. Lee Neffelkamp has quite literally written the book on what it takes and what it means to be a teacher, an educator, 
a college professor of the highest order. In both her scholarly work and in her countless public presentations, she has for over 35 years presented and embodied the model for pedagogical excellency. In addition to serving in the Peace Corps, Lee Neffelkamp earned her BA degree from McAllister College as well as an MA and PhD from the University of Minnesota. She has been a faculty member and program chair of counseling and student development at the University of Maryland. She has served as dean of the School of Education at American University in Washington, DC. She has also served as academic dean at McAllister College. She is Professor Emeriti at the Teachers College of Columbia University, where she has also chaired the Department of Adult and Higher Education. For 20 years, Lee Neffelkamp has been a senior scholar with the Association of American Colleges and Universities, where she has done pioneering and definitive research in the area of student learning and achievement. She is considered one of the pioneering scholars in the areas of intellectual and ethical development. Educators beyond number have had the opportunity of listening to Dr. Neffelkamp over the decades, and they have always been impressed, indeed amazed, by her ability to take the most sophisticated pedagogical concepts and make them comprehensible, and more importantly, applicable in daily teaching. Dr. Neffelkamp has the ability to always speak from the heart. She speaks not only with the educator, but more importantly, with the student in mind. Beyond that, Dr. Neffelkamp has a wonderful, shall we say, homespun sense of humor, born of the American heartland, cultivated during her early years in Minnesota. It is that combination of intellect, understanding, and humor that enables Dr. Neffelkamp to command the room, be it large or small. It has been said regarding teachers that a student, quote, doesn't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. In the case of Lee Neffelkamp, they certainly know that she cares a lot. And so, because you, Dr. Lee Neffelkamp, embody so perfectly all the virtues that Wagner College holds dear, it is our pleasure to honor you here today. You took my script. Can I have my script back? You can't go much further. No, that's, that's your, this is yours. It'll be mine. You gotta watch Dr. Calber, he's very sneaky. Very sneaky guy. So let me formally do this. With the, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College and the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Lee Kenefelkamp, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa, and thereby declare that your name forever be inscribed on the roll of Wagner College's most esteemed alumni, Dr. Kenefelkamp. We short people. <laughs> Some moments in life are better. <laughs> Some moments in life are more meaningful than others. And this is certainly one of those moments in my life. As an educator who has spent many professional years working to create more welcoming and effective learning environments for students, an award from Wagner College is a stunning honor. It may not be one I deserve, but it's certainly one I'm gonna take home with me on the train tomorrow. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I feel such a gift should be reciprocated. You all have honored me today. And next fall, our family will give you our grandson, who will enroll as a first year theater major at Wagner College.
Wagner College was his first choice. What an intelligent and insightful young man he is. <laughs> but I hope this moment is memorable for you, the graduates, and I'd like to speak to you now, if I may. I hope the moment is memorable, not just for your achievements, but because you are sitting at the center of attention, the center of attention surrounded by those who are most meaningful to you, family who have supported you in so many ways, friends who have accompanied you through good times and in bad times, the faculty and the administration and the staff who have worked lovingly and tirelessly to create the best possible learning culture just for you. Please take a moment to applaud yourselves and those people who surround you with love. So as you heard Richard say, I've known him for a very long time and I know his wife, Dr. Karin, for a very long time. <clears throat> It's a bit daunting. What to say to a Wagner graduate? You're not just talking to any old graduate, you're talking to a Wagner graduate. A number of years ago, your president, Richard Garassi, gave a memorable speech about what Wagner College sought to be. He titled it More Than the View. From the vantage point of the view of the harbor and the city beyond, Richard traced our immigrant and working class history intertwined with the dream and the promise of education. He refused on that day and every other day the false dichotomy between learning and working and the Wagner plan and the practical liberal arts were born. A gift not just to Wagner College but to American higher education in general. Other scholars have used the metaphor for this kind of wedding of learning and working, the metaphor of architects and stonemasons to describe that integration. Great cathedrals, as you know, can only be constructed by both. I live in Washington, D.C. and frequently go to the National Cathedral and one of the great pleasures of going to that cathedral is not only to see its soaring beauty, but to go to the very top of the turrets on a tour and to see the gargoyles carved by the stonemasons that have faces of their children, faces of their grandmothers, faces of their ancestors, and they know that no one will ever see them except the few of us who are on the tour but they carved out of love and out of art artistry that great cathedral. We need soaring and lofty visions and we need the artistry of constructing things that work. We all have ideals and your Wagner experience has helped you to form yours, but we have the need to work to make those ideals a practical reality in our lives and in the lives of others. So today I have for each of you three Wagnerian wishes. My first wish, that you will claim and create a life of responsibility. Each of you is both the architect and the stonemason of your own life. The poet Adrian Rich once spoke to a group of college students in fact, the University of Maryland at College Park, <clears throat> about responsibility. And she suggested that an education has taught you something about the conditions of others, about who you are, and about the world around you. And she went on to say, if you have learned something, then you have become responsible for acting on that knowledge in the world. You are responsible, she said, for finding a way, your way, of acting for good in the world. If you're not an orator, don't orate. If you're not a dancer, don't dance. If you're not a scientist, 
Don't be a scientist, but find a way, your way, for acting on your responsibilities in the world. The great Jewish philosopher Abraham Heschel adds to that, morally speaking, there is no limit to the concern one must feel for the suffering of human beings. That indifference to evil is worse than evil itself. That in a free society, only some are guilty of evil, but all are responsible for correcting it. I want you to know that every deed counts, that every word you utter is power, and above all, Heschel says that you need to build your life as if it were a work of art. So my first wish is I wish for each of you that the cathedral you build of your own life will be one of justice and care. The second wish, that you will live a life of wonder and amazement. I ask with you today what Mary Oliver asks in a central major poem that she has written. Tell me, she asks, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? She even gave us, in another poem, instructions for living a life Pay attention, she said, be astonished, and then tell about it, and then do something about it. I hope you take joy in your friends and family. I hope you take joy in your work. I hope you take joy in the sunrise and the sunset. Heschel wrote, our goal should be to live a life of radical amazement. Isn't that an amazing term? to live a life of radical amazement. Take nothing for granted, Heschel said, never treat life casually. So I wish you today the capacities of wonder and amazement and the ability to feel joy. My third wish is that you will live a life that is both useful and rewarding. Poet Marge Percy in her poem, To Be of Use, recognizes that the work of the world is, she calls it, common as mud, and that we must work in a common rhythm, a common rhythm to harvest the fields, feed those in need, and to put the fires of hatred and bigotry out. Your families, Wagner College, the experience of your own precious life have taught all of you to be of use. That is what a practical liberal education is all about. You have developed the intellectual and the interpersonal and the intercultural capacities to be of use in a complex and diverse society. And we need you now as we have need your generation as never before. Katie Cannon, the first African-American graduate of Union Theological Seminary wrote that it is for each generation to discern the moral situations of its time and to find ways to act on those situations. We need you to do that now, to both discern and to act. We need your commitment and your courage. We need your excellence and your empathy. We need your talent and your tenaciousness. I wish you a rewarding and useful life. Congratulations, and thank you for this honor. President Garasi, I present Freeman Horabowski. Trustees Warren Prochi and Ralph Green will assist in placing the hood on the shoulders of Freeman Horabowski.
For the past 26 years, 26 years, Freeman Hrabowski has served as president of UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. His research and publications focus on science and math education with special emphasis on minority participation and performance. In the year 2012, he was named President Obama, by President Obama to chair the President's Advisory Commission on Educational Excellence for African Americans. A child leader in the civil rights movement, Dr. Hrabowski was prominently featured in Spike Lee's 1997 documentary, Four Little Girls, on the racially motivated bombing in 1963 of Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church. In 1988, with philanthropist Robert Meyerhoff, Dr. Hrabowski co-founded the Meyerhoff Scholars Program. The program is open to all high achieving students committed to pursuing advanced degrees and research careers in science and engineering. The program, recognized as a national model, is further committed to advancing underrepresented minorities in science and engineering. Time Magazine named Dr. Hrabowski one of America's 10 best college presidents in 2009 and one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2012. In 2011, he received both the Theodore Hesburgh Award for Leadership Excellence and also the Carnegie Foundation Academic Leadership Award. These awards being recognized by many as the nation's highest awards in higher education. In 2012, Dr. Hrabowski received the Heinz Award for his contributions to improving the human condition and was among the initial inductees into the U.S. News and World Report Leadership Hall of Fame. Indeed, Dr. Hrabowski has received honors beyond number and certainly too numerous to mention here. It is, however, important to observe that Dr. Hrabowski has been named one of, quote, America's best leaders by U.S. News and World Report, which significantly ranked his university, UMBC, the nation's number one up-and-coming university for six straight years, beginning in 2009. For the past three years, U.S. News and World Report has ranked UMBC in the top 10 on a list of the nation's, quote, most innovative national university. But Dr. Hrabowski's university has earned national recognition not only for its academic prowess. No, no indeed. Only two months ago, UMBC also earned unprecedented national acclaim for its athletic excellence. <laughs> As, see, some of you know where I'm going, okay? As many of you who follow collegiate basketball may know, something quite miraculous occurred this year during March Madness. For the first time ever, in fact, for the first and only time in the 78-year history of NCAA Division I basketball, a number 16-seeded team defeated a number one-seeded team. The retrievers of UMBC stunned the nation and the number one ranked University of Virginia Cavaliers 74-54. And so the retrievers of UMBC have enabled Dr. Hrabowski to add an athletic feather to his already impressive cap. Wagner College is both proud and delighted this day to honor you, Dr. Freeman Hrabowski, for your outstanding contributions to American higher education and indeed to American society. You have opened doors for so many, doors that would have remained closed without you. You honor us by your presence here today. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College and the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Freeman Rabowski, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa, 
and thereby declare that your name forever be inscribed on the roll of Wagner College's most esteemed alumni. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Some years ago, our beloved and now late Maya Angelou looked into the face of America and said, lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, take it, this dream, into the palms of your hands. Mold it into the image of your most private self. Sculpt it into the shape of your most public need. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face and say simply, very simply with hope, good morning. Give poetry a round of applause. Poetry. Give poetry a round of applause. If you knew how nerdy my campus is, you would really understand how stunning a victory over UVA is. But I am proud because two of those basketball players had 4.0s. Give them a hand for the 4.0s. <laughs> Graduates, I took the pleasure of and had the pleasure of asking to talk to a couple of your classmates to get a sense of who you are. And I want both Glenn and Ellen to stand because they were very helpful to me. They are my cabinet today. Glenn and Ellen, give them a round of applause wherever they are. And I also met another young man that I'm going to call the essence from what his president says of, of perseverance. Where's JoJo? Get JoJo to stand up also. JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. The word we use is grit for all of you. This is what your classmates said. They said that most important what you are proud of is the fact that you have great professors, faculty and staff. Give your faculty a round of applause. that there is this intimate relationship between faculty and staff and students here, that you have first class discussions on the sticky issues of the day at a time when most people are uncomfortable with those. Wagner has encouraged its students to talk about the challenges we face in our society. Give your college a round of applause for doing that. It's very impressive. And then they said, that you are very proud that you are a very diverse group in so many ways, race and ethnicity from all over the world with different interests, different perspectives, and that you appreciate each other. Give yourselves a hand for inclusiveness, for inclusiveness. I will start with stories. The human story is one of both tragedy and hope. We are one week from the time of Mother's Day. So celebrate with me for a moment, mothers in the room. Give mothers and grandmothers and all of them a round of applause. My first story involves my own mother who grew up in a, a little rural town in Alabama. And as a child, she had a choice of either working in a hot cotton field in Wetumpka, Alabama, or, or going and working in a wealthy home. And she decided she wanted to see how rich people live, rich white people. And the woman was very kind to her because the house had something that she had never seen, a library in the house. In fact, there was not even a public library for children of color in the late 20s and 30s. And the woman said, Maggie, when you finish your work, you can go in and read. And mother began to take an interest in these books. And the woman would say, take the book home, read it, come back, let's talk about it. I want you to write me a few paragraphs about what you think. And all of a sudden, mother became a very different person because she began to develop her language skills and she was fascinated by the ideas in the books. And she began to see a distinct, distinction between herself and her girlfriends. And here was the problem. Her girlfriends were really angry when they would say, Maggie, come outside and play. And, and my mother would say, no, I want to keep reading this book. And they would say, why would you want to read that book? This is not school time. And then she began to watch them when they were reading, for my future teachers in the room. And she said, when they began to read, they began to frown. And they'd push the book aside and say, this isn't interesting. Well, nothing is interesting when you don't do it well. And here's the point. 
for all of you because you're in human service areas and healthcare and business and whatever, but at the foundation is this notion that you can read and think well. She said the more she read, the better a reader she became. And the more proficient a reader she became, the more she enjoyed the experience. And the more she enjoyed the experience, the more reading she did. And so all of a sudden, she realized exactly what she wanted to do for the rest of her life, and that was to become a teacher. And she became a teacher. Give the teachers in the hand. Give the teachers a round of applause. And she became a teacher of literature, and she would quote Zora Neale Hurston in her book, Their Eyes Were Watching God. The book begins, ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. For some, they come in with the tide. For others, they sail forever on the horizon, never out of sight, never landing, until the watcher turns his head away in resignation, his dreams mocked to death by time. That is the life of men, and she would say, and women. Give Zora Neale Hurston a round of applause for the idea of dreams becoming to... And today you are celebrating your dreams, students, and the dreams of your parents and your grandparents, and all of them have done so much to get you here today. And as I tell you these stories, I want you first to know your own story. Know your story and don't let anyone else ever define who you are. Round of applause for the idea. Nobody else defines who you are. It's very important. And you, some of you, your students, you saw my story yesterday, sitting in the back of the church, not wanting to be there, doing my math and eating my M&Ms, the good kind with the peanuts, working really hard. And all of a sudden, the man says, if the children participate in this peaceful protest, all of America will understand that even our children know the difference between right and wrong. And all I could think about was that the only books we could use in our schools were hand-me-down books. After white schools had finished, they put brown paper bags and then give them to us. And my parents were not allowed to buy my books because then I'd be different from other kids. And so all of these children felt like second-class citizens. And here was this guy who sang, perhaps this can be different. And I said, who is that guy? And of course, his name was Dr. Martin Luther King. And we were inspired. And after my parents had told me I couldn't go, and I said, you are hypocrites. And then they said, go to your room. You never told your parents at that time that they're hypocrites. You know that, right? But they did let me go. And we did march, and you heard all about that. But you need to know something. I was not a courageous kid. The only thing I'd ever attacked in my life was a math problem. I am a math nerd. When the teacher would give us 10 problems, I'd say, give us 10 more, teacher. And the whole class would go, shut up, Freeman, because I love math so much. But here is the point. All of that led to the March on Washington and the civil rights legislation. You don't know this, but believe it or not, in the 60s, only 10% of Americans had gone to college. People didn't expect their kids to go to college. This is a 50-year experiment, and you represent the result. Because of those times, you look out and you see people from all over the world of all races and ethnicities, and America has changed. And yet, we face challenges. And my students say, but there are all these divisions. And I say, but go back to the 60s, of the 1960s or the 1860s. And there have been divisions before, and it's taken people like you to say to the world, we can be better than this. And I challenge you to use this fine liberal arts education to analyze what you can do, to decide who you want to be, and to ask yourself the question, who am I? And who do I want to be in 50 years? You know, it was Samuel Beckett, an Irish novelist who often wrote on Francais, who said, here's something. He was studying the dancing of beasts. He said, here's something I could study all my life and never understand. And all of a sudden, he realized the idea was this. Oh, my God, the more I see and understand, the more I realize there's so much more to know. And the constant thinking of an educator is this. You've just begun to learn. Never stop learning. The more you learn, the more you realize there's so much more to know. I want you to know your story. I want you to keep thinking about what you can do to keep learning more and more. I want you to find ways to find the common ground, as you've been doing at Wagner, when you have the difficult situations, to learn how to listen. When you saw Hamilton and when you see Hamilton, you hear Mr. Hamilton asking Mr. Burr the question, what do I do to succeed? And Mr. Burr told Mr. Hamilton, smile more, talk less, 
I sat where you sat some years ago, and I just asked my girlfriend to be my, to be my wife. We've been married 48 years. Give her a round of applause for that. 48 years. And the one lesson I learned that I want you to know, smile more, talk less. Give me a round of applause for smile more, talk less. At the end of my mama's life, as I close, she had come to live with us, and she had developed dementia. This brilliant woman of literature had, had, didn't even know who I was, and I was an only child. And one day, we're sitting out on the porch, and she looks at me as if she knows kind of who I am, familiar. She said, I know the end is near. And when somebody's at the end of their lives, you get a sense of what's important. And I said, what's important to you? And she said, what's important? She said, relationships. This is my gift to you, class, relationships. She said, my relationship with my God. She said, hold on to your faith. You'll be okay. I was trying not to cry. And then she said, my relationship with my husband, he's a wonderful man. She'd forgotten daddy had died. And then she shocked me. She looked me right in my face. And she said, you know, I have a son. Now, I told you I'm an only child. I'm thinking, she said, oh my God, she had a kid when she was a teenager, she never told me about it. <laughs> I'm thinking, as my students would say, TMI, too much information. If I haven't had a brother this point, don't you drop this bomb on me and die. I'm really, I am not happy. I am not happy, all right? I'm looking mean. And all of a sudden, she said, he's a college president. Thank God she was talking about me. <laughs> but then she gave me the greatest gift of all. She said, but you know, I now understand that teachers touch eternity through their students. Whatever I had to give, I gave it to my children, and I will always live through them. Class of 2018, watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Dreams and values. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Before we move, thank you, Freeman. My goodness. We're in a, under a tent for a reason. It's like a revival movement. Thank you. I'm so honored that Lee and, and Freeman were able to be here with you today. Makes this day very special. Before Dr. I'm going off script because I want to say something about Dr. McNair. Before she announces and brings you up for your degrees, Dr. McNair just this week was announced to become the eighth president of Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama. And I have to tell you, my mother is a Tuskegee alumna. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice please rise? <laughs> President Garasi, I have the honor to present to you for investment the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree awarded by Wagner College. Trustee Kimberly Spiro and Dr. Patricia Tooker, Dean of the Evelyn L. Spiro School of Nursing, will assist with placing the hoods on the shoulders of the recipients. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College, and in accordance with the laws of the state of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice, and thereby welcome you to the community of educated men and women, and extend to you our hopes and best wishes for continued success. I now have the honor to present individually those just awarded their doctorates. Will the recipients of the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree come forward? The audience is requested to wait until all doctoral degree recipients have received their diplomas before applauding. <laughs> Margaret Turgeson. May 
Megan Rebecca McShay. Regina Borovic. Jebin Mary Varges. Aza Ezat. Deborah Jean Fortune. <laughs> Shoshana Wiener. Doris Ann Corona. Boris Molchansky. <laughs> With a degree recipient of the Postmaster's Certificate, please come forward. Will the candidates for all master's degrees please rise? <laughs> President Garasi, I have the honor to present to you for investment the candidates for a master's degree. With the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, of Wagner College and in accordance with the laws of the state of New York, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree appropriate to your discipline. Congratulations. I now have the honor to present individually those just awarded their master's degrees. With the degree recipients of the Masters of Arts come forward. The audience is requested to wait until all master degree recipients have received their diplomas before applauding. Will the degree recipients of the Master of Business Administration please come forward? All other master degree recipients may remain seated for now.
Okay. Here we go. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank God. Maximilian Barnhart. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Leo Schuchert. Walter Kuzmarek. Jennifer Tricarico. James Philip Walker Scott. Loriana Rosado. Nigeria Carter. Diane Catalano. Cotone. Marissa Gaynor. John Nisi. Fatima Largisfada. John Rodriguez. Ariel Salisbury. Maximilian Rottenecker. Samantha Russo. Michael Schaefer. Erica Segrin. Colin. Shahanan. Marco Madaris. Annette Ferenzi Bacco. Kristen Hayes. Shannon O'Connor. Donald Copeland. Kaiser Terry. Anthony Uco. Ryan Waitanis. Kyle McGuff. Michael Mentor. <laughs> Patrick Minson. Logan Moody. Andres Palacio. Blaren Possesta. Megan Pulley. Ibrahim Mugrin. Milo Muka. Sally Mealy. Taryn Vivello. Douglas Rigg. Louis Rispoli. Jacqueline Bruno. Miriam Amjad. Anthony Alba. Anurada Abasinghe. <laughs> Timothy Hicks. <laughs> Crystal Ladal. <laughs> 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 
Christian Grotewald. <laughs> Alyssa Manfredini. Stephen Panu. Murphy, <laughs> Taylor Sicaris, <laughs> Ryan Zarowski, <laughs> Madison Ruff. With the degree recipients of the Master of Science, please come forward. Olivia Streinlein, summa cum laude. Victoria Rhoda. Victoria Rodriguez. Charles Robinson. Zaina Rashad. Marby Hazel Alon. Halima Fode. Karen Findlay. Brittany Grant. Tamar Marise. Rugiata Jalo Kamara. Alexi Yudinov. Ruth Z. Frazil. Elizabeth Harrington. Elizabeth Givarges. Stephanie Hopkins. Jody Maman. Alicia Marcelin. Diana McCauley. Star Chalet Jackson. Brandon Kosarek. Christina Narduli. Anthony Spano. Andrew Weisenberger. Lloyd Smith. Cora O'Regan. Joseph Verga. Desiree West. Regina Williams. Thomas Grimaldi. Gabrielle Davis. Amanda Bach, Madison Greif, Cynthia Woolley, Corinne Stackpole, Alexi Alikakos, 
Michelle Icone. Tyler Fung. Carolyn Eliza Ratcliffe. Lauren Eisenbeis. Zachary Ian Edelman. Brittany Colony. Colony. Lauren Goldstein Navarez. Nyla Nikovic. Peter Chiarvino. Christina Marissa Monte. Eric McGuff. Leonora Akivoski. Rita Brusco. Emily Farrell. Ashley Benvenuto. Brianna Damora. Jessica Moradian. Jenna Lee Burgos. Ale Alsubani. Nida Bakali. Monica Cipriani. Shannon Sedena. Barbara Duckworth. Misael Dimutalak. Maria Donoforfrio Calabrese. Janice Bossert McSwiggin. Olivia June Kai. Or Solina D. Michelle. Evan Melio. <laughs> Benjamin Thomas. <laughs> Elena Vermo. <laughs> Roshan Matthew. Adrian Data, Adair Jordan, Rosa Mikos, Forrest Bailey, Alicia Giaraca, Stephanie Molillo. Jessica Ballone. Sydney Denault. Jessica Pavolko. Please honor all the master degree awardees with your applause. Will the candidates for bachelor degrees please rise? <laughs> With the authority vested in me by the Board of, a, of a Trustees of Wagner College and in accordance with the laws of the State of New York, 
I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree for which you have qualified and therefore welcome you to the community of educated men and women and extend to you our hopes and wishes for continued success. I am now going to ask all bachelor degree recipients to please be seated. We will now award the master's degrees in education. So wait a minute. Would the degree recipients of the Masters of Science in Education please come forward? Lukshmi Asirvatham. Kayla Dickey. Ashley Alioto, Taylor Vivara, Adrian Stazone, Nicole Nemec, Jennifer Wiley, Alyssa Molino. Alyssa Morganti, <laughs> Katrina Moores, <laughs> Megan Moore, <laughs> Corinne Burchard, <laughs> Victoria Manzo, <laughs> Samantha Milo. Samantha Siderowitz, Sarah Capiello, Sarah Braun, Danielle Cantorino, Richard Coletta, Randy Donahue. Stephanie Ann Frasca, Zamel Johnson, now we will come back to the bachelor's degrees. I now have the honor to present individually those just awarded their undergraduate degrees. Would the recipients of the Bachelor of Science degree come forward? The audience is requested to wait until all bachelor degree recipients have received their diplomas before applauding. Bachelor of Science degree. That's what it says here, come forward. Will the recipients of the Bachelor of Science degree please come forward? The other degree recipients may be seated. Caitlin Barden, cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Barrigan. Amanda Barish, magna cum laude. Jordan Baskerville. Maxine Batix. Nicole Benanti. William Bernstein. Spencer Byer, cum laude. John Blatchford, magna cum laude. 
Miriam Dejili. Layla Bolovic, cum laude. And Maria Borel Vargas. Sabrina Boutros. Morgan Brown, magna cum laude. Chloe Brumfeld. James Collins, cum laude. Anthony Compatello, cum laude. Joseph Cooper. Madison Cooper. Amela Zubery. Dean Dugan. Dean Duggan. Dean Duggan. Gabriella Dutzar. Crystal Farina. Summa cum laude. Drew Duffy. Jessica Donnelly, cum laude. Jamie Doty. Ryan Cotone. Trevor Daniels. Willie Boo. Nicole Boulogne. Alyssa Busconera, cum laude. Alexandria Calcibeta. Frank Calcutta, cum laude. Leoni Camacho, cum laude. Luke Zoko. Osham Arachige. Ana Sios. Michael Cancellari Jr., cum laude. Anthony Arpaia. Jason Klotz, magna cum laude. Andrew Ayad. Andrew Ayad. Sydney Obasian, magna cum laude. Joseph Abatello. Catherine Cantine. Christina Capano, cum laude. Brian Carpenter, cum laude. Janine Catalano. Courtney Cavallo. Michael Catalano. Paige Claydeck, magna cum laude. Aaron Cristiano. John Anderson, cum laude. Kara Alexander. Dimitri Alexander, magna cum laude. John Aquaviva, magna cum laude. Joseph Crowley. Cassandra Diocera, magna cum laude. Lucas DePofi, cum laude. Adam Deffer. The Adam Derer. Everesto Diaz.
Tony Ann Russell. <laughs> Melissa D'Angelo. <laughs> Melissa DiGiovanna. Dana DeSando, magna cum laude. Jeannie DeTori. Brian DeVolo, summa cum laude. Tanner Dixon. Frank Galanti, Andrew Galante, Michael Gerbino, cum laude, Carolyn Gibson, cum laude, Gianna Giordano. Lucia Giordano, Ariel Gittens, Juliana Hoff, Brandon Hutchinson, magna cum laude, Gabriela Ienko, magna cum laude. Timothy Jackson. <laughs> Katarzyna Jarzabek. Claire Johnson. Jake Johnson, magna cum laude. Yamoni Johnson, Caleb Jones, Olivia Josephson, Gerald Kahari, Evelina Karwalska. Francesca Franz Frasca, magna cum laude. Anne Fox. Caitlin Flaherty. Halima Taya, cum laude. Piper Skinner, cum laude. Gianna Fumafredo, cum laude. Erin Finn. Jessica Fink, summa cum laude. Amira Fazal. Nicole Forcu. Alexandria Manzi, cum laude. Madison Marable, cum laude. Fabia Marimoti, magna cum laude. Sina Matthew. Randall May. Sandra Mazanet, Patrick McMiniman, magna cum laude, Madison McNichol, cum laude, Melanie Mylinger, cum laude, Lisa Messo. 
I'm Linda. sorry, Linda Messo. <laughs> Linda Messo. John Meyer. Pedro Meza Lopez. Emily Miller. Frank Molino. Julianne Hammerton. Carolos Hanna. Rosalind Heger. Robert Heffron. Danielle Henderson. Margaret Hyde, cum laude. Samantha Hodges, magna cum laude. Sveta Ramani. Anthony Raguso, cum laude. Kisma Herman. Farwa Kesser, summa cum laude. Ian Golden. Catherine Golinge. Christopher Gomez. Pamela Grio, cum laude. Mary Helen Gustafson, cum laude. Quadia Gustas. Cameron Hafner. Yasmeen Khaled, cum laude. Alexandra Kleiger. Denzel Knight, cum laude. Paula Kolodinsky. Blondina Kovacevic, cum laude. Mackenzie Kupris, cum laude. Gregory Lafer. Victoria Lamberti. Emily Lauritsen. Samantha Laverage, cum laude. Jordan Lefkowitz, magna cum laude. Colin Lurch, Julia Lynn, Kevin Lipton, magna cum laude, AJ Sumbry, Kathleen Timmy, magna cum laude, Stephanie Ann Thompson, Thompson, cum laude. Kirtland Sullivan, magna cum laude. Justin Osuji, cum laude. Magna cum laude. Nicholas Padrone, cum laude. Felix Padilla. Paul Andre Pierre Lewis. Jennifer Plotetsky. Laura Petrie. Natalie Persia, magna cum laude.
Gabriella Parisi, cum laude. Andrew Park. Jacob Pawella, magna cum laude. John Peretta. Nicholas Marsh, magna cum laude. Cameron Smith, cum laude. Deanna Cylon, cum laude. Kelly Somer, Summa cum laude. <laughs> Pat Zapone, summa cum laude. <laughs> James Yard. <laughs> Catherine Yard. <laughs> Alexander Zellis, cum laude. Daniel Yerkins, cum laude. Grace Solapaka, cum laude. Natalia Scroga. Dominic Palmieri. Gent Perluvkai, summa cum laude. Caitlin Spear, magna cum laude. Joseph Lomelli. Andrew Stryline. Jacqueline Otaki, summa cum laude. James Prestopino. Antonio Oliveri. Emma Osborne. <laughs> Emily O'Regan, magna cum laude. Ashley O'Connor. Michael O'Byrne. O'Brien, summa cum laude. Natalie Nye. Jeremy Nuss. Carlina Nguyen. James Napolitano, cum laude. Nicholas Musafin. Brianna Munoz. Rebecca Mount. Lucas Moreno. Jillian Moran, summa cum laude. Timothy Mayer, Timothy Marr, magna cum laude. James Lino. Victoria Vega, magna cum laude. Jennifer Vicioso. Samantha Von Gritten. Kelly Walsh, Alexandra Varasi, Clea Valteri, Monica Valero, cum laude.
Taylor Marie Redmond, magna cum laude. Lauren Taby, summa cum laude. Ellen Reedy, magna cum laude. Ellen, Erin Riley. Benjamin Rispoli, cum laude. Tanasia Russell. Maite Reese, cum laude. Ramon Sanders. Anna Laura Santos, cum laude. Ryan Scola. Jimmy Richards. Shaquille Scott. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Sean Seely. <laughs> Alexandra Shorak, magna cum laude. Danella Vukovic. <laughs> Caroline Skylar. Alicia Walters. Cassandra Bernard. Alan Wang Sophia Williams Addison Williams, cum laude John Williams Jessica Wilm, magna cum laude. Jeffrey Wisniewski. Christian Redstrom, magna cum laude. Will the recipients of the Bachelors of Arts degrees please come forward? Erica Anninson, cum laude. Miranda Abbott, summa cum laude. Alfred Aquaviva. Julia Adams, cum laude. Taylor Ahern. Danielle Allen, cum laude. Emily Altabrando. Stephanie Applin. Keyshawn Banks.
Maurice Diarara. Riley Bartolomeo. Cecilia Barreta. Bridget Bonar, cum laude. Margot Bergeron. Charlton Boyd, summa cum laude. Caitlin Bradway, cum laude. Brianna Bryce. Christopher Buss. Annabelle Caba. Jacqueline Grace Caruso. William Martin. Nicholas Manna. Austin Janant. Dana Gambardella, magna cum laude. Danielle Fuchs, magna cum laude. Jesse Flaherty. Eric Elson. Toby Dubin. Elizabeth Ann Doyle, summa cum laude. Jonathan Donchev, cum laude. Liana Doherty. David Dines. Aaron Denisovich. Alyssa Delia. Erica DeFrancisi. Joseph Dalton. Brenda Koopa. Summa cum laude. Danielle Croft, cum laude. Joseph Crowdry, magna cum laude. Gabrielle Chiosano, cum laude. Gianna Cianciano, magna cum laude. Joanna Catalano. Jordan Gonzalez, summa cum laude. Monica Fundacaro. Ashling Green. Kate Catherine Grichi, magna cum laude. Scott Hamovitz. Matthew Healy, cum laude. Kirsty Hessing. Isabella Inohal. Santa Hirsch. Delaney Huvenar. Brianna Hoffman, cum laude. 
not hope. Kimani Howard. Sabrina Kalman, summa cum laude. Stephen Kingston. Wendy Kramer, cum laude. Armand Laika, summa cum laude. Mary Leahy, summa cum laude. April Lillard, magna cum laude. Hadley Patterson, cum laude. Michael Bardo, cum laude. Kathleen Palladino, magna cum laude. Christine Palka, cum laude. Sinidro Osinaki. <laughs> Elizabeth Oliver, cum laude. Angeline Nortz. Caitlin Norman. Elizabeth Murphy. Nicole Moulet. Antoine Mosley. Ryan Maroney. Magna Cum Laude. Haley Muller. Cum Laude. Cassidy Miller, summa cum laude. Iman Mitwali, cum laude. Joseph Messner. Maria Meski. Caitlin McKnight. Devon McCray. Loftus, cum laude. Michael Luzchek. Glenn McDonald. Charles Poveromo. Hannah Preble, summa cum laude. Natalia Razzik, cum laude. Adrian Ramos. Congratulations. Quincy Razzin. Leticia Marlene Romero. <laughs> Troy Rude. <laughs> Tyler Ross.
Victoria Ross. Jacqueline Scusa, cum laude. Erica Rush, magna cum laude. Christine Shoulders, magna cum laude. Andrew Russo. Jack Snorbus. Olivia Silvestri, cum laude. Emma Sinat, magna cum laude. Ariana Sotili, cum laude. Samantha Sullivan. Jessica Terizzi, magna cum laude. Garrett Toole. Sophia Sugros, summa cum laude. Joseph Usio. Taryn Volpe, cum laude. Darius Walker. Anna Ward. Malik Warner. Whitaker, summa cum laude. Karen Willahan. Victoria Yard, cum laude. Joselito Ibanez, cum laude. Lockling Young. Are there any bachelor degrees recipients receiving the Bachelor of Arts or the Bachelor of Science who has not come to be named individually? Please come forward now. Please honor all bachelor degree awardees with your applause. I would like to recognize three students, if I could. First, we would like to recognize Charlton Boyd as this year's winner of the Donald W. Spiro Award for Best Academic Achievement and the highest award given by the college. Charlton, please be recognized. I now have the pleasure of introducing two student speakers. I'll ask them to come to the podium together, Iman Medawali and Glenn McDonald who will address the class. <laughs> Greetings, President Garasi, Wagner Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, alumni, and fellow graduates of the class of 2018 and a big hello to my cooperating teachers and students at PS20 whom I've shared a great student experience, student teaching experience with and they're watching us now live from class 3103 at PS20. <laughs> First, I would like to give a special thanks to my parents and friends. Without your constant support, I wouldn't be standing here today. You are my backbone, mama. My name is Iman Matwali. My parents are Egyptian immigrants who have constantly instilled in their daughters 
all four of us Wagner graduates, how to be strong, independent women. Before I started my journey here at Wagner, my sister asked me a question. She said, if I had to choose between a pencil or a pen, which would I rather be? I couldn't fathom why she would even ask that, because in my mind, the answer was simple. I would be a pencil. You cannot erase with a pen. Your mistakes are permanent and visible for all to see. I would be a pencil with a really good eraser. With my mind made up, I came to Wagner to be a teacher. Then I would preach to all my future students how great pencils are. As students, we learn to be proud of our accomplishments and ashamed of our mistakes, but at Wagner, I learn differently. I am a dual education and English major. <laughs> I naturally gravitated toward programs like Napella, where we taught Western African women to read and write, and the after school program at PS20 to help ESL students. But as a pencil, I still held so tightly to my safety net that I wasn't truly participating in all the opportunities Wagner had to offer. But the Wagner community made me feel comfortable enough to change. And that's when I decided to live up to my true potential, despite any reservations. I went on to become a writer for the Wagnerian, served as president of both the Education and the English Honor Society, and was elected vice president of Omicron Delta Kappa. And by, <laughs> and by stepping out of my comfort zone, I truly experienced the merits of an education at Wagner. So much so, I went all the way to Spain to study abroad. Yeah, we educators go big or go home. <laughs> I used to walk around campus and see a quote by Benjamin Franklin that said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. So theory and study may gain me knowledge, but experience is indispensable to learning. Four years ago, fear of failure was holding me hostage. So it was only natural when I was asked to be a pencil or a pen, I chose the pencil. Now I know it is much more gratifying to write my life out in pen. And as an educator now, I am going to tell my students to be bold, to leave their mistakes in ink, to write over them and under them. They will create something far messier, but also much richer. At the end of the day, what are we, if not a whole lot of experiments, some more successful than others, that compile to make us who we are right now at this moment? And it is far more important for us to be conscious of how we can use our mistakes to become better learners, and you graduates are a living example of that. In Arabic, we always say, Ahlam, Saddak, Tajarra, wa Athal. Translated it is dream, believe, dare, and do. So I urge you to dream, believe, take a stand and become those pens and dare to leave a smudge or two behind and do not apologize for it. Your penmanship will only improve and you'll get to look back and see how far you've truly come. Congratulations to the class of 2018. President Grassi, distinguished faculty, and my fabulous peers in the class of 2018. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak today and giving me the opportunity to reflect on the past four years. I want to pose a question to you that Dean Curtis Wright posed to Wagner's community leaders at the beginning of the year. Referencing ta Coates in his book, Between the World and Me, Dean Wright asked us if we considered Wagner as our mecca or beacon point? Did our campus community empower us to reach our full potential? 
I often thought about this question during my work as a student ambassador. For the past four years, I've enjoyed showing off this beautiful campus for dozens of prospective students. As a tour guide, you quickly learn that colleges are better described through personal experiences rather than, rather than dry facts and figures. For an example, on a tour, I might spend only a few seconds covering subjects like class sizes or the average student workload. However, I will happily go on and on about my professor and advisor, Dr. Allison Arendt, and her, yeah. Dr. Allison Aaron and her passion for what she does, that same passion that eventually inspired me to become an English major. I will briefly mention details like the Horman Library's hours of operation so I can focus on the valuable resource that is Dennis Schwab, our Dean of the Library. <laughs> Through assisting with mountains of research, Dean Schwab has been a genuine lifesaver for me and other students who somehow always find themselves cramming for finals. In Spiro Sports Center, I quickly run through all the types of equipment our gym has because I would rather brag about the fierce competition among our various athletic programs, especially the women's water polo team. When I walk past the team's numerous banners declaring their several championship victories, I can't pass up the chance to say my favorite dad joke. I hear the water polo team is so good they haven't drowned any of the horses. Okay. 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 <laughs> now that graduation is finally upon us, the question remains, is Wagner College our Mecca? Here is my answer. On my first day at Wagner, I remember waking up early to explore my new surroundings. And mind you, this is the first time, or the only time I woke up early for my entire college career. I walked by the Oval and faced Main Hall, picturing myself where I am now, four years older and hopefully wiser. At the time, I stood in the Oval, alone and unsure of what the future would bring. Occasionally, doubts would plague my mind, telling me I didn't belong here or I couldn't do the work. The Wagner College community said otherwise. Impassioned faculty members driven by a love of learning prompted me to explore new areas. Resources such as Case and the Horman Library helped me organize myself on campus and beyond. Wagner's admission staff helped me hone my professional skills and network. Student organizations allow me to explore various interests such as journalism and radio production. Shout out to Adam, uh, DJ Adam D. Now while I can't answer this question for you, I can confidently say that for myself, Wagner College has been a profound experience a second family, and yes, my own personal Mecca. In the coming months, I hope to implement the skills and experiences I had as a student ambassador as an admissions counselor for another institute of higher learning. Unlike myself from four years ago, I can proudly stand here today on the Oval without any doubts about my future. While I may leave this special place, I will not say goodbye. No matter where I end up, I will forever carry with me the guiding spirit of the Wagner College community. And I know you will too. Thank you. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you Ms. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Cordiello, class of 2006 as well as 2007 Vice President of the National Alumni Board who will induct the class of 2018 into the Fellowship of Wagner College Alumni. Thank you. So I realize that I'm the last person to stand between you and actually graduating so I will keep this very brief. A while back you guys were given a road map a very well thought out, structured plan to get from point A, being a kid, to getting to high school, to getting to college, to getting to cross this stage today. What they don't tell you is that after today, there's no more roadmap. You can't look externally for where you go next. You have to now rely on your own compass. And your compass isn't here. No one else can tell you you can't look outside of yourself for that direction anymore, and that's an amazing thing. It can be scary, but I would urge you, if you feel like you need to recalibrate that compass, I would urge you to remember three things. One, 
ask yourself who you want to be. Two, ask yourself what you want to give. And three, ask yourself what you want to leave behind in this world. When you come at life from the perspective of your legacy, the direction becomes much clearer. And if you're scared or feel like you're lost, the second thing I want you to know is that you can reach out. The re people call Wagner a family. That's the first word they use to describe this place for a reason. And you're not leaving that family today because you're graduating. You're actually just being inducted into it. So allow us to help. Reach out. We are pulling for every single one of you. We brag about you already. We want you to know that there's a world ahead of you, a light inside of you, and an absolutely tremendous army behind you. So will the class of 2018 please stand? On behalf of every single Wagner graduate that has ever walked across this stage, it is my honor and privilege to welcome and induct you into the Wagner College Alumni Association. You may move your tassels to the left. Welcome to the family. As we're about to bring the commencement proceedings to a close, we have just two things to do. One, I want you to thank our faculty, our staff, and our trustees for all the support they've given you. They deserve a round of applause, please. And I invite everyone here, as I said earlier, back to Main Hall, to the Main Dining Room. We have wonderful desserts if you're staying on for a little bit longer with us. Reverend Malzahn will end this with a benediction and then be joined by the members of our senior class who will sing our alma mater and then we'll process out. Congratulations for a wonderful, wonderful commencement. I know Wagner College class of 2018, may our hearts and hands and lives continue to be brave and bold and kind and just, and may you remember that you are always beloved.